Michael Jacobs. 499 it is for Courtney Walsh. And the high fives are all over the place. Why not? And this one is just short of a leg. Gary Costa playing at him. Not getting down to the brilliant catch there by Ridley Jacobs. Wicket number 499 for Courtney Walsh. Gary Kirsten caught Jacobs, ball Walsh for 22. South Africa 38 for one. now for Courtney Walsh brilliant 24.72 per wicket you cannot do better than that one away from the magical 500 Chuck Callis is the next man in 25 years of age and he was wicket number 377 which was the wicket that uh, Courtney Walsh passed Malcolm Marshall's record here it is a very very good catch by Ridley Jacobs very, very sharp chance. Well taken. I mean, Gary Kirsten will be disappointed with that spar, but terrific bowling for Walsh. Provided some terrific pressure. And he's finally got the breakthrough. 38 for one, it is. Good grab. And time for change in the commentary box. It's going to be Ian Bishop. And alongside him will be Tony Cozier. Thank you, Mike. Crowd now right into it. They know they're on the verge of seeing history here. As Walsh. Many of these spectators would have seen him get his 400th test wicket on this ground when he got Ian Healy. The Australian in 1999. Just wonder if many thought they'd be here waiting to see him get his 500. Or if Walsh himself thought he'd be still here. Could that be it? It is! 500 for Courtney Walsh! The first bowler in the history of the game to get 500 test tickets.
biggest landmark in the Caribbean. And perhaps appropriate too, that is at the Queen's Park Oval in Trinidad, where he has just taken in the first innings 50 wickets in Test cricket, and where the people know to celebrate perhaps better than most anywhere in the world. Back he goes, and there's the celebrations. day it's been historical day it's been <laughs> he won't remember he won't forget today rather 500 test wickets there's congratulations from the two batsmen he's tired you every right to be I remember when Fred Truman went to 300 he said well whoever beats me is going to be very tired well Fred this fellow's got 200 extra Last year, just a year ago, you were passing Capo Dev 435. That's another 65 wickets in a year. Fantastic. How does this compare today with, uh, with last year? It's, last year was, I mean, the motion's a lot higher and uh, you get the chase on a record. And I think, you know, getting that home was you know, something very special. But to come here and get 500 wickets when you know, no one even, met, even thought about you getting there, you know, to me it's very special. And I'm just happy that I was able to achieve it and you know, just to thank my teammates and everybody involved. Let me just uh, carry your mind back to 1984 when you made your test debut. Clyde Lloyd was captain, Forbes Burnham was president of the band, the Berlin Wall was still up, Nelson Mandela had six years still in Robin Island. That's a long time back. When you started, what was your first aim? My first aim was just to try and maintain a play in the West Indies team. Um, and then obviously after you got a couple of games, so if at the end of your career you can get 200, 200 plus wickets in such a good quarter, then you'd have done well. Um, to still be playing and to be you know, coming back from the early era with those guys and still be playing now, I'm very happy with myself. Of course, you and uh, Kurtley Ambrose will always be remembered as a partnership. Kurtley retired last September. How have you gone without him? Well, it's been... To put it in small, it's probably alone in the battle. Um, he's always been missed, but yesterday he showed his face in the place and he was happy to see him and he wished me well and said he was sorry he's not going to be here to see today, but he was confident it was going to happen today. And um, I'm happy to prove him right. You've now played against uh, every country that the West Indies have played against. Uh, look back on your career, your most difficult batsman to bowl at? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think in my earlier days, people like Javid Meander and Alan Border were people who stick in your mind. They were like Price Gallop and Graham Gooch, I think. And, um, but as the, the wicked got flatter, all the battles were more difficult to dislodge. Before this series started, you said uh, a Jamaica farewell, finishing in Sabina Park. Any thoughts of 600 test wickets? <laughs> A lot of people on the boundary said that today, but that thought is very, very far from my mind. Um, I'm just hoping to get through the series here. Uh, and as I said, you know, see what happens to my apart. But um, I don't think 600 is on the cards. And you talk about the people on the boundary. What a reception from this crowd. Yeah, I mean, when I got the 400 here last time around, they, they gave a tremendous reception. And today, the small gathering that was here, let me feel very, very proud. And I'm just happy that the people who came in were able to saw it today. And I'm just happy for them as much as I'm happy for myself and my teammates. Well, Courtney, congratulations on behalf of everybody here in the Caribbean. I'm sure all over the world you're greatly admired as an outstanding ambassador for Jamaica and for the West Indies and 500 test wickets. You must be a tired man. I'm a tired man. I'm a lot drained, more drained than I look. Physically, I felt all right, but um, it, it's, it's a bit draining. I'm just thinking about it for the last, from the beginning of the series. And I'm just happy to the way now when I can focus on what I have to do for the remainder of the series required.